Luke Savings. I'm from Central Louisiana. Uh, we started on this little project last year. Um, you might have seen them on the internet through uh, 360 Yield Center Y Drops. Uh, we were looking for a efficient, more efficient way to drive yield and with placement top dressing our, our corn acres. Uh, we farm around a thousand acres consistently every year of corn, mostly irrigated. We got a few acres of uh, dry land. And, um, you know, with low crop prices, you know, it's a little bit of upfront investment, but the way that we've been growing the last several years is adding that last kick shot with, uh, with dry urea. We were just kind of looking for a way to buy uh, nitrogen cheaper and uh, get it spread out a lot cheaper than high, having to hire the airplane. So, with that being said, here we go. This is something I'm very proud of. That's my wife and my kids. Uh, you know, everything, you can work all you want to, but as long as you don't have anything to go back to, you know, it's all for naught. But anyway. All right, so here was a test plot that we did on a field uh, right by our shop. This is a field I had taken over a couple of years ago, and it's a pioneer test, and you see the, um, the, the average yield across all the, the hybrids. Now, I'm not, you know, putting this up here to say that I'm any kind of great farmer or anything like that. It's just real life. It's what happened. Uh, we put 214 units of nitrogen um, Put 42 gallons at V3, and uh, and then we came back. I would have liked to have got in a little bit earlier around V10 and place with the wide drops, but with we were had a wet year and it ended up being about V12 by the time we got through planting soybeans. And uh, here's a yield map of the field, and this is kind of the linchpin that sold me on how great that these things were. This is, uh, the test plots were right here, you can tell. And generally this field always kind of fell off pretty drastically. You see the river, we're pretty light, uh, Red River alluvial sand right here. But it just stayed consistent through the whole field. And that was the field average, it was 226. And you saw it was 224 with the, uh, in, in the test plots. Um, we had a few bad varieties, you can tell. I think it was uh, 13, 16 right here that was really a dog. And then we planted a few cropland varieties. And uh, I don't believe I'm gonna put them back in the, the test plot again, but they got some few things that they need to work out. But anyway, so we, uh, whenever we started, you know, talking back and forth, trying to figure out if I was gonna get on this uh, deal, you know, I mean, it was a it was a pretty good investment up front and um, talking back and forth with some of the pioneer reps and and so well, let's try a little bit of uh, you know variation through the field you know I was just gonna tailor all everything all my whole uh, nitrogen program on these and I, and I did for this coming up here but here's uh, this is our test field um, this is kind of a farm standard that we use uh, that's our, our Captivate that we use at planting our starter fertilize, and then we put a, a quart of zinc with it. And um, that's pretty much how, oh, all right, yeah. And the test one, we put just, you know, you go out there and you put your 70 gallons out, or most of Louisiana would go ahead and put their, all their nitrogen up front at V2, V3, you know, or v, close to V4 if they had a good starter out there. So we wanted to look at the difference between this and then splitting it up between 42 gallons and 25 gallons. So here was our test number two. You know, we put 140 units down at V3 and V4 and we left out of the field. And uh, it was really hard. Like me and my dad, we don't farm together, but we farm, you know, right next to each other. And what, we, what I do on my acres, he does on most of his. So, um, this was actually his field, so I kind of talked him into, you know, doing these three tests. And this is, was his farm standard. Nitrogen was cheap, so we put a boatload of it out. And uh, this was my deal, you know, 
here, we ended up with a total of 213 units and he had like 272 on his farm. We lost a lot of corn acres to some floods. So uh, we tried to maximize you know, our yield on, on the rest of our fields. And here's a yield map. Well, this was some tissue tests that I did. Uh, this was test number one and this was test number two with the, uh, this one was, you know, where we put out 42 gallons. That was uh, everything up front. And you can tell right here, it was almost deficient at B10 is when we took these tissue samples. And then this one was, that, that says that's 299, and that one was like 3.2%. So I'm getting pretty close to the, you know, the red flag right here. And I would have liked to have uh, applied my nitrogen at like B10 instead of B12. We stayed planting beans and couldn't get out there in time. Uh, and another thing that I didn't realize until we pulled these tissue samples was these P and K levels were low. And that's what I'm going to address this coming year. And I'll show you uh, as we go a little bit further into it. But keep in mind we had a supremely wet spring and all the roots were really high. You know, we didn't have hardly any deep roots uh, through the field. So I just think that maybe they were sunk down low or maybe that's just wishful thinking. I'm not sure. So here's the yield map of that field. This was where we had put everything out up front. And you can see right here, that's the line for where we started using the wide drops. Now this field has a pretty uh, definitive sand ridge that runs through the middle of it right there. And, it, and it, it naturally does kind of taper off over here. But on the next slide, I'll show you where from our yield map from a few years back. And this was where we had the 270 units. And uh, you can tell how good that was. But I think 270 units on my farm is probably a little bit too much. Uh, we're not going to try to, I'm not going to recommend that to very many people. You know, like I said, we, we were short on corn acres, so we had a little bit where we could, uh, you know, front end load it. So um, here is the yield map from 13. I tried to turn it here, and you can tell where that sand ridge ran through the middle of there. And then this one... Watch this one right here, and we'll move back a slide. It completely took that one out, and that 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 ridge is is gone. Like I said, you know, being close to the river on uh, on soils and you know changing soil types and stuff like that, you can see a yield monitor kind of go up and down. With these things, I, I think that you have a lot of potential to take that out. There's another, there's that map again. This is uh, after I had them on the machine. Um, we're on 12 row 38s. So like with your boom, it, you, you kind of, you fold the, the outside sections in and uh, they, they, they don't have, I think I was the first person on 38 inch rows that used these things because we had to make uh, uh, a, a deeper boom because of our tire size was so wide. And this is a picture of, uh, of us being out in the field. One of the main concerns was your corn being so high going through it. But I ran through it like, you know, you, it's, it's almost tassel. Most everything I ran through, I, I'd be tassels every now and then you could see. And it didn't break any over. And uh, the only thing is like where you ran the, the sprayer, you can see a little bit of heat marks on the, uh, on the tip of the corn leaf. And like our plans for 17, I, I, I was such a fan of, of these wide drops that I, you know, I've tailored my entire corn program on those by putting it out. Now you see the, the 20 gallons here or 15 to 20 gallons. I tried to do 30 last year out of it. Can't do it. It just, your sprayer, it's unlevel. You could, uh, I went four miles an hour with 91. It's a, it's a 16 row boom. 
and we put in 91 orifices in there, and the John Deere system doesn't work with variable rate nozzles for some, I don't know why, but we were uh, back and forth. It took us two days to figure out that they wouldn't work. So we had 91 uh, orifices in there, and you could do 25, but you had to go about four miles an hour. But when you drop down about 20 or less, you can go 10 and rock and roll. So this is kind of our program here. Is, uh, uh, we started playing with some twin row corn last year. We've been planting twin row beans for a while. And we had the technology, but we just never did it because we have always been starter fans. And so I think, you know, we've done a lot of calling around and asking around, and we've come up with a blend here, you know, to put out 125 pounds. I have a 26329 5S and uh, treated with some zinc. I have the seed treated with zinc and um, work that into the bed pre plant. And then uh, before lay by, we're going to go with another 40 gallons, whether it be, well, it'll be with the, uh, with our knife rig. You know, we're not going to get away from the knife rig. I think that having that actually in the ground is, um, is the best way to do that. And then we'll, we'll hit it with a uh, 28004, you know, at V10. And on the single row, it's kind of like that, except we're putting up a uh, pop-up. The reason we're not using pop-up with a twin row is because I don't have a track with that five remotes, and I can't run a, can't run a pump. <laughs> so that was, that was our way around that, rather than spending a boatload of money. And I think that adding these two, these two nutrients right here is going to get me away from these numbers right there. Those will be, I'm hoping that these will be a lot better. You know, you, you put your, uh, your P and your K out variable rate in the fall, you don't really know how much you're actually losing until you get a tissue sample like this. This is the first year that we've done them just because we're in a very remote location. It's kind of hard for people to, people to come out, you know, in a timely manner and get, uh, get things from us. So anyway, I, I really feel that, you know, this uh, 220 units or, uh, you know, 225 is kind of where you want to be. I think that you don't want to, uh, this is just some, some recommendations if, if you were thinking about, uh, about these rigs. Um, on our sand, our soil type, you kind of hit that, that, that peak. You know, we don't have the, the top end numbers that um, that you can find. You know, if we go back to the first field, the one right behind our shop, my dad used that this his standard of 272, and I yielded him about 10 bushels. You know, so I, and we did the same thing on both fields. He uh, he actually put at um, at V4 he went with 42 gallons, and then at V6 he put 25 with a knife rig, and then we went with another uh, 17 gallons over the top with the wide drops. And I, I think that there, you know, there's a, there's just a leaching point, or it might not be a leaching point, it's just a, a you know, point of no return there. So this is kind of our, uh, our deal for next year. Like I said, I, I just wanted to share that. And, um, you know, by getting that, this is where where we're moving for forward to. And I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm no, no great farmer by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, but I do like to kind of do different stuff like this, just to, it keeps me motivated every year. Luke, on the, the wide drop application, are you using some kind of stabilizer? Yeah, yeah, I put uh, Invail, Invail with it. Mm-hmm, sure do. And, uh, and when they, when they come, Let's see, there it is. You can't really, the picture's not that great, but you see how long these tails are? That's good if you were flat, if you were playing your corn flat. But being up on a row, you know, we try to make our row so big so we can flood the, uh, flood the middle. You're gonna have to cut these in half. They're hydraulic hoses and uh, that they see in, and you're gonna cut them in half because they're not gonna they're going to want to fall into the row middle. They're not going to run along the base of the plant. 
the idea of it is to run and kind of drop on the on the base of the plant. And we were very nervous about that because of the burn. But we didn't see hardly any burn. There was a little bit of burn on that bottom uh, that bottom leaf, you know, where it just kind of splashed up. But the actual corn plant itself had zero burn, where it did perfect. And you're on check versus urea? Uh, I actually did not. I didn't. You're running over poly pipe to do this, I assume. Has that caused any problems for you? Well, actually, uh, we didn't have any poly pipe out when we did it. <laughs> See, I've I wanted to do this, but that's what bothered me. I, anytime we tried to run over poly pipe with a big sprayer, it creates a lot of problems. Yeah, well, I've ran over poly pipe a lot, spraying beans and stuff, and I, I've honestly never had very many problems. You know, when you get into the three or four times uh, doing it. But we were lucky, you know, we didn't have, uh, it goes along with that wet year, you know, we didn't have any, we didn't need to have the poly pipe out just quite yet. So we didn't irrigate until, actually I put this out and then we rolled the poly pipe the next day. So, and I had a video, but this is the first uh, PowerPoint I've ever done. And it's probably the most bland PowerPoint that you've probably ever seen. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how to get the video on there. So, uh, there we are. And I'm sorry about that, but uh, <laughs> that's just the long and the short of it. Are they pretty easy to take on and off? They, uh, they are. Um, let's see, I'll go back to it. When it, when it comes to you, you kind of, they, they send, it's, it's like a boom extension. And um, it's got square tubings that come out, out from, from the boom. You have these little plates that you put in there. I leave them on there all year long, the plates. Yeah, the weight. But I take the, the, uh, the um, square, square tubing out and it takes that extra boom off. Because it's really heavy. I put, them on there, I put it on there pretty early, just trying, just playing with it. And uh, you don't want to be running that all year long because it's like you have to, you know, play with a hydrostat to, to get your boom up. But, uh, and then it, it's, it's, it's really not that terrible with, um, with the drops on there. They're not a whole lot heavier. The heaviest part is the actual extra boom because it's so far out there on, on a, on a 38 foot. Mm -hmm. And I got some bigger tubing than what they sent since I was going to be so far back got a little bit heavier tubing than what they sent. So, and, uh, and backing up with them is a pretty, it, it's easy to swing in and I, I can go down the road, you know, they're far enough away. You can turn and all do all your stuff, but turning and backing up, it, it'll, it'll catch that, that nose right there. If your tire's just right and bend this and make a pretty good little U shape in it. <laughs> we found that out in the, in the shop yard there. So, any other questions? I really, I really like it. I mean, I think this is, uh, you know, the next way to go. Um, I wanted to try some on some smaller corn, but I was really afraid of the burn, so I just didn't do it. But I, I'm not afraid of it anymore. It'll, it can take it. They'll have them for red machines too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they have them for a red, yellow, any any kind of machine. Mm -hmm. They, they put them a lot on the Hagee machines because they're a little bit taller in the front and you can, you know, your boom's out in front of you. They have really good luck with that. With that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Kearns. Hey, and another uh, thing, they make a, uh, they make, it, it goes in the middle of the boom here and it's called undercover. And it would be great for the sugar cane. Yeah. We didn't get them because they were another Five thousand bucks, but, uh, <laughs> and we didn't have any grain sorting this year. Normally we do, so that's another. When we get back into the grain sorting business, we'll uh, might look at those undercovers. It's another spray. Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's it's still like a, um, you know, shaped like a cone, and it's got three spray tips. Mm -hmm. One is kind of a fall, and the other two spray out. You know, like out the like West Grand bars. Yeah. Used to be. Mm -hmm. So y'all think the concept? So model would be the same as corn? So I think that it would. Yeah, I was going to plant uh, quite a few acres of Milo last year 
and the high water kind of messed that up. Um, Where the aphids would have finished it off. Oh yeah, they would have. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so but I was going to try it on 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 some Milo. For dry also. Milo mm -hmm. drops for dry for a lot. No, that's just for liquid. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Lee. Mm-hmm.